Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show where the Teach Better team gets to be with you live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. My name is Ray Hewitt. Currently have like a lemon tea in front of me and I have an incredible guest. Actually, I just say I have an incredible friend with me today. If you don't know him, he has a brand new book out. So I hate to tell you, but you're like already like kind of behind the times. Like this is a good meeting. You're going to get to know him as a person. Then also his resources are awesome. People are already writing killer reviews about the content and the story shared. So I'm just so excited for you guys to meet Matthew. We'll be right back. Good morning. I hope that you are finding a way to like warm up on a cold January day as we wrap up the month. Matthew, how are you feeling? I'm doing well. A little chilly as well. A little rainy, a little slushy over this way in, in Maryland, but you know, doing well, staying positive. It just like never ends, right? I mean, end of January, I guess we expect the cold at this point, but still you wake up in the morning and you're like, did it need to be this cold? I mean, <laughs> agreed. Agreed. <laughs> so good. Well, for those of you who have not met uh, Matthew, I would love to have you kind of introduce yourself a little bit, um, share a little bit about what you do in education. We'll start there and then I have more questions for you, but I want to make sure our community gets to know you and all that you're working on. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely yeah, just very grateful to be here and, and hi to the whole community out there. My name is Matthew, Matthew Bowerman. Um, I, this is my I guess my 26, 26 and a half year now in education. Um, I'm a school administrator uh, coming to you from Maryland. Um, about six or seven years in administration now and then 18 or 19 years or so uh, in teaching. Um, primarily through a lot of that, I was a theater and dance teacher um, and then English, creative writing and special education um, for kind of the second half into my into my administrative work. And I've taught uh, middle school, all grades, uh, high school, all grades, and a little bit of college. And then I work, like I said, as an, a school administrator in elementary now, which is just beautiful, um, in K-5, to um, with a wonderful school system and a, a lot of great school staff and uh, some lovely colleagues, great principal, just an amazing school community. So just a lot of opportunities there to grow and, and to love and to laugh. Um, and yeah, I'm also... Uh, uh, a writer, uh, obviously, and researcher and speaker and trainer um, for Teacher Goals, um, another uh, colleague organization. And then, um, yeah, I guess a, a big part of my career prior to kind of getting into, into education and, and and as a part of some of my educational work, too, um, I was a professional actor, singer, dancer, touring the country and performing nationally and internationally um, off Broadway and touring and film and TV and theater and kind of always been wrapped up in like the arts and education and and being with people and working with people. So um, I'm, I'm glad to be here and, and a part of this too, so. Okay, and you didn't even mention the fact that you're like this like baller author. We'll get to that in a second. First of all, do you prefer Matthew or Matt? Because I have to ask, because I am I have a million questions in my head. No, I appreciate it. Matt, Matthew is great, thank you. Matthew it is. All right, so here's the deal. I got to be a stalker of yours, a fan of yours on social media. We got to meet in person at the Teach Better Conference back in 2021. Was that it? I'm like messing up my years. Oh my was gosh. No, no. Was it that long ago? No, it was 2022. No, we didn't do it last year. It was 2021. It must have been. Oh my gosh. Okay. Anyway, it feels like yesterday. It was amazing. And, Whatever. <laughs> and Matthew was, for those of you who may not have been there or like stalked Matthew like I did, he was like front row every keynote baller educator running around networking getting to know people he was like the perfect person at the next future teach better conference he's like the guy you want to find because he always has a story to tell he's super approachable like have him in your corner that's my recommendation but i didn't know anything about what you did before your role now in education. I had no idea that you had this theater background. Um, we were choking off live uh, before we went live of all the things we have in common. Add that to the list. I have I have no ability to say it was 
ever in any way close to professional, but I'm such a fan and a theater nerd. I think it's so cool that you had this incredible space you were in before education. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of that opportunity, um, I think, really informed a lot of my work now. Um, you know, getting to interact so forward facing with communities and and young people, um, bringing, you know, arts, arts education, in, integrating multidisciplinary stuff and the arts with with communities um, was so, I think, affirming for me on a personal level. And that just became a professional kind of piece as well. I, I guess just kind of the, the notion of service just expanded into becoming an educator. Um, and it was a, a very, I guess, a malleable transition. Um, but my greatest role also that I, I, I have to talk about, at least to some degree, is like that I'm married and I'm a father of six, um, which is like, you know, the best, the, just the best thing ever. Oh, I love this. See, you get to know more and more about Matt, not only or Matthew, not only professionally, but uh, also personally. I will say I want to use this opportunity as a reminder for everyone listening this morning as you're getting ready for your day. This is a reminder that hobbies outside of education, roles outside of education, enjoyment outside of education is not a selfish decision taking away from you as a teacher. This allows you to be more well-rounded, get to know more people, get to learn more as a whole educator. We have to remind ourselves that the more we live in the education bubble, we actually do a disservice to our students. Go out, get a hobby completely unrelated, go try something, go audition for something, and think about all the things that you're going to be able to learn and then take back to students, whether you are in the classroom or in some sort of leadership role in the education ecosystem. So really, really important. Just little reminders. We head into kind of wrapping up January and heading into February. Matthew, the other thing that we uh, haven't mentioned yet is the book that is doing really, really well. I know it's been out for a few weeks. I want to encourage everybody to add this to their February 1st reading list. Tell us a little about the book. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I actually, I, I, I held it up. I I just want to touch it. Like, I can't believe it's here. Um, it's called Heart Leader. Um, yeah, I think uh, I, I probably should say, first of all, more than anything, to, to thank all the children, um, all the students and, and parents and community partners and families who made the book come to life. Um, teacher goals, of course, you know, and Brad and Elena for the opportunity. But, you know, the heart of all of this work um, are the people right? We're in a service profession. It's all about the people. And this book came to life as a result of all that. So the last 11 years or so, I've been researching and framing the book, I think, putting all the pieces together. Um, probably six of that have been writing it. Um, the last couple, uh, rewriting the entire book multiple times. And so yeah, it's called a trauma responsive approach to teaching, leading and building communities. Um, and the book is heavily centered in uh, trauma responsive engagement, designing trauma sensitive spaces, um, social, emotional, strategic support and uh, building community student, you know, school family engagement with the whole kind of overarching lens of the word love. Um, many, many, many years ago, someone said to me, oh, you just you must wear your heart on your sleeve. You're like this heart leading kind of person. And it always stuck with me that like. No, no matter what you do, no matter what I do, no matter where I go, um, if I don't carry love first in my work, first for myself and, and really trying to get in, into unpacking all that for myself and living there, there's not any possible way I can engage in this work in any kind of empathetic or authentic way to build school improvement and academic success, let alone social, emotional health and wellness and students and staff and families. So the overarching idea around you can operationalize love and the book really looks at that in terms of trauma trauma responsiveness and, and origin building work, starting with self around operationalizing love um, as a strategic tool in schools to support students, to prioritize parents, and to engage and empower school staff at, at every level, K through 12. And while the book has kind of an educator bend, it's, it's also heavily for mental health professionals. It's also for parents. There's large parts of it that speak to all the different kind of stakeholder roles that go into um, this this service, um, this gift that we're involved in of education. Uh, and it really kind of starts with my uh, origin um, and my own trauma story, um, kind of 
as Brene Brown talks about uh, kind of rumbling with vulnerability and really trying to be as vulnerable as possible in the journey that I took to uh, clean and clear uh, myself so I could do the, the real work with students. And like you mentioned before about finding hobbies and having ways to like really, you know, uh, actualize your whole human self and really be your own whole person in order to bring your best self to the classrooms and to the boardrooms and to anywhere else in school spaces in the same way, really unpacking your own origin, your own trauma, your own needs, and really doing at times really brave, courageous, and really difficult, messy work to establish yourself as a, a full whole human being in order to do the work that we need to do with students and, and staff and and families out there in the, in the educational spaces. Mm. This is going to be such a great conversation for educators to have, maybe in a book setting, a book study setting, as they head into February and March. These are the perfect months to kind of do not only this internal work because it's the new year and many of us are inspired to at least do a gut check on that work, but also then learn then how to bring that into the classroom. So we'll be right back to ask Matthew some follow-up questions. Thank you. sticking with us. We are live here with Teach Better Today morning show talking to Matthew about so many different things. He has such a rich life and there's so many different questions that we have the opportunity to ask him today. But one of the key things that I want to keep to focusing on for the next few minutes is his incredible book that recently came out and we're already getting some great feedback on. It sounds like something that not only dives into Matthew's story, but also the important work that needs to be done with students. Matthew, if you were to reflect a little bit, maybe an educator listening is just getting ready for their day. They're wrapping up January. We know it's you know probably a chaotic time already, even though it's the morning. Um, how would an educator know that this is a, a good resource for them versus maybe just a resource that's good for some people, but maybe isn't the right fit for them right now? What, how, what kind of audience should we be looking for? Well, I think it really uh, focuses on anyone in the K-12 space. Um, I think I say that because I lens it from my own experience, having lived through all of those spaces yeah. um, very deeply and, in, and, in, and in, intently, um, and so and still working in that work. Um, and still engaging on all, all of those fronts, even from the administrative place. Um, I know, especially po kind of post-pandemic, how hard this is for everybody, how difficult this has been for everybody to have survived, let alone thrive during the, the pandemic times to come out of it and try to reestablish some sense of, of, of oneself in classroom spaces, um, whether you're a paraeducator, whether you're a bus driver, whether you're working in the cafeteria, whether you're a teacher, um, whether you're a parent trying to mitigate um, all that we've been through, I kind of look at it like it's been a, a time of of great hope and great loss, um, and that we need to recognize that each day. And so this resource, um, you know, it's full of places that I, I intentionally put into the book where it asks some really tough questions about one's one's own personal journey in this work, what led to it, where they are now, and what their kind of uh, focus goals are. And it gives a lot of spaces to write in the book, to highlight, to just mark all over the book as one kind of comes to what I hope are some really clear um, understandings or some, some of their own tough questions uh, about the nature of this work and what they can give to it, what they're willing to give to it, what they're able to give to it. And I think so I come to everybody with that every day, um, just like I try to take like literally intentional time about 5.45 a.m. every morning when, I, when I'm at the building um, to ground myself and some real clear questions about bias, 
you know, about privilege, about loss, about trauma, um, and where I am in the work today. Because I think it's it would be very nearsighted to ask anybody to be at some un, unattainable 100% perfection. You know, there's no such thing to me as perfection as an educator. There's just practice makes permanent, trying to establish permanent practices that you know, engender success that elevate love, that support social, emotional health, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, in classrooms. And like I said, in all the spaces in and around schools, but really taking that time to ground oneself in the tough questions, celebrating the miraculous in ourselves, celebrating the work that we've done on ourselves to get to that front of that school, um, the work we've put in, the degrees we've earned, all, all those different things. People can kind of collect their artifacts along the way to set them out on the table in front of them to be able to celebrate, you know, all the things that have kind of built them as well as the things that still stand as like areas of growth in their work to really begin to think about what else they need to do. Cause you know, all, all the things that are going great, all the things that are easy, they're there and we just sustain those and, and, and live in those and celebrate those. It's, it's the other things that we need to also commit ourselves to that, that ask tough questions and, and force us often to lean into, to spaces, but I, I like to say the the more you're doing the work of self and 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 exploring and and and, and digging in, it kind of acts as like a light to push back uh, the corners of the dark around ourselves and kind of illuminate more of the space as we move forward. And so I I think this book um, has chapters and are and are kind of scaffolded or structured in that way that really start with origin building, and then look at the role of oneself with relation to trauma work and social emotional engagement work with a child and with children and the conditions you can create. And then the same thing with engaging with a community of care around student, up around parents and caregivers and external partners. And then really how to do that same critical work with staff because we do a lot of work. I know my school system has done it in a lot of places around the country and beyond are doing a lot of work to try to help children mitigate a lot of trauma and social emotional needs, but we haven't done as well of a job nationally with our school staff at every level and they need more of that they need more pd more training more engagement work and more sympathy empathy and compassion geared towards them and what they've been through and what they're carrying and kind of their uh their invisible backpacks um and 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 it, and the book really focuses on each of those things and then kind of brings it back around to the nature of bridge building across all of those relationships and ties it back again and again to the idea of love and love language and love approaches and, and behaviors, you know, across all of those spaces, what they look like, feel like, and sound like. Mm, there's so many things that I know educators are going to love to dive into and so many takeaways from even just this short conversation to be able to think through how we can better reach our students, better work on ourselves and do this work on a consistent basis. I love your focus on not striving to be perfect, but making it a part of our daily routine, something that we find we almost do without even having to intentionally think about it, even though I know this is very intentional work, but trying to put it into our norm rather than just those blimp special moments that we remember to do this very, very important work for students. Matthew, would you mind sharing how our community here can stay connected to you? I know that you are an incredibly well-connected educator and very well-connected in the Teach Better family, but I would love to make sure that people here are not only following you on social media, but also know how to connect with any resources that you have available for them. Well, I, I would say, I appreciate that. I, I'd probably say first, I want to just recognize and, 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 and share some gratitude you know, with the Teach Better family, like you mentioned, because I think uh, you and your and your staff and the organization do a tremendous job to provide a lot of impactful messaging and love and resources and opportunities to people all across the, the country and beyond. And that's just a really a powerful thing, because I think sometimes teachers, school staff in general, feel like they sometimes exist uh, alone in a classroom behind a grade book, behind the keyboard. Um, and, and, and struggle because of the weight of all we carry now as educators in the world. Um, I think the pandemic also really spoke to just how much educators do every day. And that weight can be tremendous and you can really feel alone sometimes. So to have people like yourself and your team out there, letting people know that they're not alone, it's okay to struggle, um, but we can do those hard things and we can do them with love and there are people out there to support. So I really, I really appreciate that. Um, to find me, um, 
you know, like, yeah, like you mentioned, the book is obviously it's available through Amazon. Um, you can reach me at MJ Bowerman on Twitter. Um, Instagram is um, all lowercase. It's Mr. MR MJ Bowerman. Um, my email is Matthew J Bowerman at gmail.com. You can contact me at any time. If there's things I can do, if you're interested in me for a conference, interested in me to speak, to come work with you, to talk one on one, if you want to get on the phone and talk about an issue, uh, a challenging issue with a student that you need support in, or how to help build a trauma responsive or equity based team. If there's anything I can do, um, I don't think any of this exists in a silo. I don't think it ever should. Um, and I'm certainly in this work, um, you know, branded as the heart leader or whatever. And, and I'm trying to bring up a, a place to it that's my own um, and authentic from my place. But I'm certainly standing on the shoulders uh, of giants who came far before me, just trying to see a little further into the work. Um, now, you know, grateful for what they've left in their legacies and, and, and building on all of that, um, but happy to engage at any point with anyone in any space around around any of this. Well, I so appreciate it. If any of you have any struggle connecting with any of the guests over on Teach Better Today Morning Show, please feel free to reach out to anybody on the Teach Better team. We all know and love our guests and we always are very connected. So if you ever need a direct link or something that we can help with, let's make your life a little bit easier. Just direct message me or anyone on the team and we'll make sure it happens. Matthew, thank you so much for getting up and being a part of this morning show. I know there are so many things that our busy mornings have in store, but I want to wish everybody a wonderful rest of their day. And of course, if you need anything, please feel free to reach out. We'll see you later, friends. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. (laughs) The comments are always so entertaining. (laughs) We'll see you tomorrow.